It's all right, Mike. I was on the treadmill, man. I didn't know this was going on. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, got the, yeah. I got the text, and I'm like, I'm running, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> right now? <laughs> all right. Uh, I love when you're familiar with the process. Yeah. Let problem. me get ready. But listen, I mean, Mike, at this point, I mean, you guys have prepared for, I mean, probably every fighter on the UFC roster, right? So what's, what's the most difficult, challenging process of, of getting ready for Conor McGregor? I mean, it's a, it's the same process of every fight. You know, he's a very skilled fighter, tough fighter, big power, great timing, and uh, he brings a lot of eyeballs to to the fight. Every every fight is uh, equally as difficult to prepare for. I think. You talk about his his power and, and, and that. I mean, one of the things you think about with Dustin Poirier is how durable he is, right? I mean, you like, okay, man, he can go long, he can be in these wars, but when you're going against a guy that has the type of power that Connor does. I mean, can you rely on that and say, well, we know our guy may get touched up early, but we know he'll last? No, of course we don't want to get touched up. The plan is not to get hit at all. That's always the plan. You know, I mean, sometimes that happens. That's the fight game. But, uh, you know, he, he can, we can get through it many different ways. You know, we, of course we don't want to get hit. When you look at Connor striking, I mean, what, what do you what do you credit to? Like, it's it seems like this otherworldly thing that he's able to knock people out with quickness. I mean, is there is there some God given ability that he has, or is, there, is it about his accuracy? Is it about the timing that he has? Is the traps he sets? I mean, what is it that makes him so effective that maybe others aren't? I think he's a, uh, has good timing with his counter punching. I think that's his best attribute. Nice. The Abu Dhabi experience. Um, Last time it was kind of more tailored to the to the time. Right now you're doing the middle of the night thing and all that. I mean, how much more challenging has that been this time around for, for Dustin and me for the whole team, really? We came out a little bit earlier. I think we're, our sleeping patterns are on 100% where we'd like to be. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that we did. We, we took that second charter, and we had, I think, 10 or 11 days here in Abu Dhabi. And I think now we're, we're on point. Waking up exactly when we want to wake up, we'll have a you know a certain amount of hours before we leave the the hotel and go to the fight. I think actually better than even a normal fight week, where sometimes you're you're waiting around all day to go to the venue. It's it's better to you know get some food in you, digest a little bit, go to the fight and uh, and perform. And I think that's when when guys per perform the best. And uh, and I think we're right where we want to be. Nice. Last thing for me, give us some insight into. To Dustin's mindset, I guess, right? I mean, he's fought nothing but killers, like the absolute best of the best. But is there anything different here in terms of his drive, his motivation, whether it's because it's a rematch, whether it's because it's Connor, as you said, you know, massive star and all the eyeballs. I mean, is there anything different about this fight from, from Dustin's mentality that you see? I mean, he he's a veteran, he's a professional, and, and that's how he approaches each fight. He's had many big fights, you know. A Khabib title fight is huge, is, is a monster fight. Title fight with uh, Max Holloway is a monster fight. Fight with Gaethje, you know, former world champion, is a mo these are all monster fights, you know. This is another very big fight, and uh, he, that's how he's approached it. And uh, he's a, uh, you know, 40 fight veteran now and fought all the toughest guys in the world, and he's prepared. In terms of the sleep schedule, have you guys been trying to go to sleep He's waking up a certain amount of hours before he'd like to fight. You know, how, how much time is, is good for him to n no longer be groggy, have some food, digest, and, and where he thinks he'll be comfortable for his body. Everybody, I think, peaks at a different time in the day when they feel their best, and this is uh, where we're at uh, the best spot for Dustin. Obviously, before the, the first fight, there's the, the famous clip on the embedded where he says, oh, I've never hated anyone as much as I hate Connor and that stuff like that. Do you prefer the dynamic now? That they're respectful, they're both fathers, and it seems to just be much more charitable in general. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he's been emotional, you know, in the past in fights. I mean, he's been in, emotional in fights and won also. Uh, but I always think it's better to, to pull away the emotion. You know, I think it's better to to think with your your brain and you know not your heart or and get emotional and and you you tend to lose sight of the technique and and the job that needs to be done when you when you fight with that type of emotion and yeah there's been, there's been talk obviously a lot of the media before the fight's been focused on connor and there's been talk that maybe dustin's just being completely overlooked 
does that sway him at all? Does he actually almost appreciate that he can kind of just let the show go on and he can just do his own work in the background and, and just show up and fight night? Yeah, I think that's the case. I think he likes to be in the background. I think he's been overlooked many times and he's overcome that, uh, that situation m many times over. So I think he enjoys that role. Where do you think that comes from? Because I remember talking to him before the Dan Hooker fight where he was the favorite and a lot of people were kind of expecting him to win. He's like, I don't like this at all. Like, I'd rather the roles be reversed here. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure where it comes from, but you know, so some people love the camera and love the attention. I don't think he, he necessarily loves that, you know. He, and he's very good at it. He's very, I think he's very good on camera. He's very good. Uh, he's a great speaker. But uh, he just doesn't, I don't think that's something that he enjoys. Some people live for that part of the game. He lives, you know, to compete, to fight, and to uh, make money. Honoring this team, like, to be kind of bold with the pre-fight predictions and throw it out there, do you have anything you want to say ahead of this fight in that regard? Man, fights can go all kinds of different ways, and you know I'm, I'm often wrong when I do predict. So I don't like feeling stupid after uh, you know I, I make a, a terrible prediction. So I'm, I'm not going to go out on a limb, but uh, I, I feel confident in victory. Uh, it's it's good. I think he showed a lot of good, uh, great defense against uh, Habib. Habib was in uh, many, many times, and he was countering very well and fought him off, m made him work very hard. I, I think his, his wrestling looks sharp. He looks like he's got very good hips. I would assume he's very strong. You know, he, he does have a tendency to, to fade late, but he seems like a very athletic guy. A lot's been made this week of Max Holloway's performance. So he's the best boxer in the UFC. Connor kind of laughed at that. So as a coach, who would you kind of put in that category of some of the best boxers in this promotion? I mean, all these guys are up there, you know. Dustin is 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 up there. Uh, Connor's up there. Max is up there. Masvidal's up there. That it's, un until they have a, a a boxing match or boxing fight, we we'll never know. So it's all speculation and kind of silly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>